welcome to the Instagram live interview series. I am Sergio Louise, your host, and we're going to be talking to Kitty Velour today. Super excited to have her on. Uh, this glittering, uh, fearless, badass entrepreneur, dancer, performer um, is just a powerhouse. She does online classes. Um, she runs a cabaret show. Um, and she has been in the pole community and our dance community for quite a while. So we are going to bring her on. So excited and happy new year, everybody. Let me... Hey. Um, and if you have any questions for her, then definitely... Ben, hello. How are you? Hi, I'm good, thank you. How are you? Good. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you so much for having me. It's a yeah. pleasure. Yes, I was just taking a look at all the things that you have your hands in these days, your online classes and your cabaret show. Um, I mean, we it, it's exciting. We could talk about so much. First of all, tell me when you got started in pole and how that became um, you finding your authentic moment um, and kind of what it did for you personally for your own way. So I, I started pole dancing 11 years ago, which is crazy. <laughs> um, <laughs> And I just wanted to learn how to dance at the time. And I tried out loads of different dance styles. I was like, Oops, did I lose? Did I lose you, Kitty? Let's see. I've got a frozen screen. Give me a hello in the chat, everyone, if you can still hear me. Give me a thumbs up. Oh, let's bring on Kitty again. Hello, here hello. we are. Back. <laughs> it kicked me off. <laughs> yes, oh, good. Good. We're getting a thumbs up. People are, you're, they're hearing us. Okay. Thanks everyone for the, for hanging in there for the technical difficulty. <laughs> yes. So where were you? What did we miss? You wanted to dance and you tried a bunch of different dance forms. Yes. Yeah. So I tried a bunch of different things. Um, I was pretty bad at everything else. I did. I tried ballet, tap, modern jazz, pole, and I just love pole so much. It was just so different. And I liked that it was a little bit taboo. It felt a bit rebellious, a bit alternative. And I think the thing I still love about pole and what it did for me then is just this transformation of body confidence and um, kind of accepting yourself and engaging your, um, embracing your sexuality, your sensuality, and all of these things that I'd never had the space to do before in my life and I suddenly I was opened up to this whole new world and I was just addicted from then on I just couldn't get enough and I love it still to this day yeah now you're sharing it with so many different people what has been your experience in guiding your, your students and what kind of transformations you see for them um in all the different ways yeah I think I think the main thing is is confidence which can come in a lot of different ways confidence in your your physical body confidence expressing yourself emotionally confidence in um the way that you hold yourself the way that you move through the world i think it's not just within a class space when you start to feel more confident in yourself and accepting yourself i think that does translate into your outside world everyday life as well and i love seeing that people starting to advocate for themselves and the less and less clothes that people wear we all start off with you know the long 
leggings head to toe covered and then slowly but surely the the clothes get smaller and smaller and the booty shorts get more <laughs> booty <-ish. laughs> and I just love seeing that I'll never get bored of seeing people blossom it's just the best yes I was just you just made me think of this quote that I had just recently seen about, you know in the mental health space of this maybe it's not about like learning or adding to who we are, but maybe unlearning and getting back to kind of source and self and, and maybe all the, the, the stripping down of all the extras. And I just, it just shot into my brain right then we were talking about less and less clothes. Like perhaps it's all about just getting closer and co closer to our, you know, to our original self. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I feel like there's a lot of things that we're taught growing up, societal norms, which are just not right. And it is that process of unlearning and unraveling yourself um, as you're on this transformational journey. Yes, I've never, I've never really thought of those as two parallels, but it's like, yes, we come in with all these clothes and all this extra baggage on and we're just kind of stripping away a little bit a little bit and saying gosh you know what? i don't need that i don't need that either look at my brilliant body look at the amazing things that it can do and and how much it can bring joy to you know my mental health as well so yeah that's so cool yeah absolutely so the the age-old question because everyone is always you know poll students and of of all different levels are always asking you know um, teachers' relationship to consistency and what consi what your thoughts are on consistency. Um, I know there's like a lot of different ways of thinking about consistency and dancing consistently or coming back to something again and again. Um, lots of different ways to think about it, but the word consistency, what does it mean to you? I think consistency is like the art of showing up, isn't it? Being able to rain or shine, make it there, make it to that space and continue despite all these kind of other external factors. And yeah, I think consistency is is such a, a key part of, of a pole journey. I think for me anyway, and for a lot of pole dancers, it's quite like a sort of solitary thing as well. We spend a lot of time on our own with the pole <laughs> hours perfecting <laughs> these these shapes and I think you you have to love it you have to be really passionate to be able to be consistent because if you don't have that deep love there for it you're not gonna want to keep showing up and keep going yeah yeah there's something about that um you know knowing what it does for you feeling what it does for you and having that drive and the why bring you back again and again um rather than this i have to do this thing but ooh, i choose to do this because i know how it makes me feel um yeah and i know it is such a funny word in that way because then there's also the you know the thought of gosh i i had a conversation with one of my colleagues and friends and instructors at my studio and we were also talking about how every once in a while it's an interest when you feel that you need to take the break what happens if you trust and wait for it to call back to you right when you're needing a break and what would it be like for instead of worrying oh my gosh you know i'm I, i'm I'm taking a break and I'm never wanting to come back to this again, or I'm not sure if I want to come back to this again, but uh, trusting the universe that if you're supposed to be there, it will call you back. Um, so I don't know, it's just that running through my head as well. Yeah. I think, I think Paul is always going to be there as well. And I think people get um, quite anxious about taking a break or yeah, having too much time off, but I found that in my life, like sometimes I've been traveling and I've been away for a few months or I've had like illnesses where I've not been able to work. And so the progress is really like not a straight trajectory. It's very up and down. And I think part of the, the, the journey of pole is to be able to pick yourself back up wherever you are. 
you know it will always come back those skills um you're not always going to be always progressing all the way up so, you know life happens um and i try to embrace that as well like when i've lost strength or flexibility um i try to enjoy the journey of it because I remember when I was a beginner, everything was so amazing. And sometimes I wish I could kind of bottle that feeling of just being so inspired and awed by everything. So I try to embrace that, you know, if I'm, I don't know, for example, an invert, say you lost your invert and then you're trying to get that back again. You get to do that whole journey again and get your invert and have that joy all over again. So it's not necessarily a bad thing. And um, the journey is just such probably the most beautiful part it's not always about getting the actual move because then we get the move and then we forget about it and we move on to the next thing but it was the the looking forward to it the dreaming of it the trying you know all of that is the really magical part oh it's so true i know um it feels so wonderful to kind of reframe yourself into being a beginner again and again and again in full you know um you're, you're, you know, you're absolutely right. There's that magic at the beginning. And the wonderful thing about polls, there's so many different facets of it, that there's no way that you could really run out of facets to be a beginner at in poll, you know? So if you really so want to, you know, you could be like, okay, now I'm going to focus on edge work, which I, which is totally new and crazy, you know, to me, to me and my body, or now I'm going to really, um, uh, pivot my focus and training into flexibility. You know, you, there's always a place to in pole to be a beginner. Um, <laughs> if you're wanting to chase Absolutely. that. Love that. Yeah, there's never enough time to train for everything, is yeah. there? <laughs> kind of but that's what makes it fun. Yeah. <laughs> that um, I think has really set pole apart from other forms of dance in my brain. Um, because you know people are always considering oh is pole getting boring to you and it's like oh well which part like the performing and putting together routines the flexibility the um strength and conditioning the heels work the contemporary movement like i don't know because if i get bored with one i could just jump over to something else couldn't i <laughs> depending on how i feel that day you know yeah that's what makes it so so enjoyable and so addictive because there's just always so many different aspects that you can work on and that you learn and evolve and how your style will change as well like over your journey yeah i love it yeah, speaking of that, tell me how you would describe your own style and how that came about um my style is very sort of bombastic you know I move very fast I'm always bouncing from one spot to the other I'm very flexy very unapologetically filthy kind of push the boundaries a little bit with that and um I guess I describe it as sort of like a showgirl stripper style I started off my pole career as a stripper so for me it's just such a core part of my my learning and the way that I move is always about engaging and connecting with someone that someone can be myself or an audience but i always think about like how is this viewed from from that perspective the audience perspective even the way i train um i always train to post something on instagram which in in some ways is like it's a lot of pressure but then i kind of enjoy that i'm like i'm making something really cool and amazing to show it and share it with my with my following with my audience and that incentivizes me to to train i i do wonder what kind of pole dancer i would be if we didn't have social media because <laughs> i feel like it's such a driving force um for me to practice um i don't know I don't know. Do you know what I mean? Because I video everything. It's just such a part of the way I learn now as well as that kind of visual being able to watch myself back and correct it. Um, so yeah, my style is very much influenced by all of those kind of different elements. And also my background in cabaret as well. I was kind of brought up on the East London queer cabaret scene. So I was always with drag queens and burlesque artists and I was always watching them and the way that they would piece choreographies together. And it was, ve it was just very different, um, I think, to, to pole. Like the cabaret world is more, 
I guess. Like it's more costume based, it's more conceptual. Um, whereas pole is definitely more like movement based, like it's not as led by the costumes or uh, elaborate in that way. So that's also a really big um, influence for my style. God. Tell me about your show that you produce. Yeah, so I produce my own cabaret show called The Pussy Parlor. And it's a sort of neo style, stripper style cabaret show. So it mixes old parts of cabaret, like traditional cabaret, sort of based around the 1950s, 1920s, those golden eras of burlesque. Whereas I like to incorporate a lot of pole dance or kind of things that are sexy in a more contemporary way as well, and kind of bring it to the modern day, make it a little bit different. Um, and uh, showcase pole dancers as well and sex workers and and all of that good stuff because like not not a lot of shows center us or represent us and i feel like we're just so talented and such a amazing group and community and i just wanted to see more performance opportunities for us and um, so that was a really big driving factor of making my own show and yeah i love it i love having my own show i get to pick all my favorite performers and I can do whatever acts and pieces that I want. It's just an amazing um, creative outlet. Is that something that has been happening annually or is it ongoing? Like, how does it work? I think I did the first one in 2022 and I did them sometimes every month and then I'd have a bit of a break or now I'm doing them every few months. Um, so, yeah not that long that I've been doing it I was kind of overwhelmed by the idea of going from performer to producer because it's such a different hat to wear um and it is quite stressful but it's it's definitely worth it definitely worth it yeah so I run them every few months the next one's going to be in March here in Manchester it's going to be a pink theme for my birthday because we we love a bit of pink <laughs> wonderful Awesome. So what messages or values do you hope to convey to your students? I know you have an in-person um, student base as well as an online student base. I just try to be the, the teacher that I feel like I would need as well. So I try to be very nurturing. I find that um, that's what most people need is that is that little bit of reassurance that comfort a little bit of mothering um to fully be able to to be themselves be their authentic selves and like you were saying earlier about we're kind of shedding all these layers and unlearning stuff it takes time um for someone to be comfortable to to embrace themselves so i think a lot of love a lot of praise a lot of encouragement is really what's needed and and for me the most important thing is that my students believe in themselves because when you believe in yourself like it's quite amazing the things that you can achieve and it defies all logic of what people say you can and can't do for your body type or whatever but if you believe you can do it you can do it and that's the magical part that i love to see and i love to give to my students is that belief that you can do anything you can be anything you want and so that's what I try to encourage my students to embody as we're learning together wonderful yeah what a what an honor to be witness to so many people's self journeys of self-discovery in this particular way <laughs> you yeah. know yeah so cool awesome well where can we find you if we want to train with you if we want to hang out with you if we want to go to your show <laughs> so you can find me online um my online platform my school is called dance with kitty um so you can learn from me there i have hundreds of tutorials pole floor work twerk chair there's loads of um off the pole stuff as well and then there's also full length classes um hour length class recordings that you can can go through um 
in person i'm just teaching intensives at the moment so it's like workshops but over two days so we'll have like a full weekend of workshops so you can sign up to an intensive with, with me in manchester um i also run my pussy parlor cabaret shows here in manchester as well you can find all the links in my bio if you want to buy a ticket or um come to one of my intensives um yeah i feel like that's all the things awesome well it's so it's so wonderful to chat to you our first chat of 2024 and um enjoy moving into this new year with all of your new projects thank you so much it was lovely to talk to you too sergio good kitty take care thank you bye bye <laughs>